Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me here on the Royal House of Ra. I am your host, Ramses Khufu El Ra. Today's show is episode 24. And with this show, we're going to talk about the weakening of pharaonic power. This was the age after the, uh, the new kingdom which uh, consists of the 18th, 19th, and 20th dynasties, which I had discussed the last dynasty of that period, which was the 20th dynasty, and I discussed about the last five pharaohs of that dynasty and the beginning of the decline. Now, the decline happened further during this period, the weakening of the pharaonic powers. This was the time of the third intermediate period which was from 1069 to 525 BC and then you had your third late period from 525 to 332 BC so this was the decline of of Kemet this is when Kemet was when you had foreign rulers that was coming over, you had foreign dynasties like the Babylonians, the Assyrians, um, the Libyans, uh, Nubians, uh, other dynasties that came in and um, basically ruled. But um, we're going to go with that. Today we're going to discuss about the high priests. Uh, which they were part of the third intermediate period and we talk about dynasty 21 as well uh, which was a dynasty at, that started from at uh, tennis uh, and this was a dynasty also associated with the third intermediate period so um, we're going to go into that, but before we go into that, I'd like to give a thanks to those who support the show, continue to support the show. Uh, please hit that like button because it helps out with the uh, the show here on this YouTube channel with the algorithm. And also, like, I mean, um, subscribe to the show, hit the notification so you know when new shows are here. Uh, so... Let's, the next show is going to be episode 25. And in that episode, we will discuss Dynasty 22. Okay, we will discuss Dynasty 22. And that would air on Monday, April 4th. At 5 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, 4 p.m. Mountain Time, and 3 p.m. Pacific Time. So there you have it. All right, so let's go into this. Uh, 2,000 years after its inception, Kometan civilization began to slide downhill after achieving the uh, giddy heights of the old middle the old middle and new kingdoms no longer was Kemet in the eyes of the ancient world and isolated Shakari la or land of the lotus eaters no longer were her pharaohs the god kings manifest on earth as in better times. Economically around 1000 BC the country was virtually bankrupt. Outside influences began more evident as other ancient civilizations Assyrians and Persians followed by Macedonian Greeks broke into the fertile valley. Confusion swayed back and forth even to the extent of Kemet being ruled in the 25th dynasty by Nubians or Kushites from the once despised lands south of El Elphili 
Little could be done about it. The ultimate came with Alexander III, the great, driving out the hated Persians in 332 BC. He was recognized as the son of Amun in the old traditional way. He at least in founding Alexandria brought Kemet fully into the intellectual ambit of the now omnipresent Mediterranean world. Okay, so let's, before we go further, I'm, I'm going to go into, now, some of these names is going to be a little bit difficult to uh, pronounce, uh, but we're going to start with the high priest, which was at, uh, the height of their power was at Thebes. And the high priest era, era started from 1080 to 945 BC. The first high priest of this uh, age was Hithor, who reigned 1080 to 1074 BC. Then it was Panka, 1074 BC to 1070 BC. Then Pinetjem, the first, uh, he reigned 1070 to 1032 BC. Then uh, Masa Harata reigned 1054 to 1046 BC. Then uh, Menkat Har Pare reigned 1045 to 992 BC. Then Pai Nintem II reigned 990 to 969 uh, BC, and then you had uh, Pesus, uh, Susnes, uh, the third, who reigned 969 to 945 BC. Now, and then you have the 21st dynasty, who began their roots at Tantus. Uh, that dynasty was from 1069 to 945 BC. Uh, this was the time when the priesthood ruled, I believe, at the uh, northern regions of Kemet, and then you had the 21st dynasty you had control of the southern. Uh, the pharaoh of this dynasty, the first pharaoh, was uh, Smindid, the first who reigned 1069 to 1043 BC. Then you had Amun Nas Amun Nit Su, who reigned 1043 to 1039 BC. Then you had Susnans the first, who reigned 1039 to 991 BC. Then Amun Nem Mopet, who reigned nine. 93 to 984 BC. Then, then you had uh, Old Sarkon the Elder, who reigned 984 to 978 BC. Then you had uh, Samun, who reigned 978 to 959 BC. Then you had uh, Susnans the Second, who reigned 959 to 949. BC. All right, so let's get into this. This first part should be discussing about the uh, priests and the role the priesthood paid, played in this period. And then we, from that point, we'll go into the, uh, the 21st dynasty. The steadily increasing power of the priesthood of Amun at Thebes had come to a head under Ramses the Eleventh. Homer in extolled the wealth of Thebes in the Iliad Book Nine. In Cometan Thebes, the heaps of precious ingots glim 
the hundred gated thieves. The Amun priesthood owned two thirds of all temple land in Kemet, ninety percent of all ships, eighty percent of all factories, and much else. Their grip on the state's economy was paramount. It was therefore merely a short step for Hathor, as mentioned earlier, to enforce his supremacy over the last of the Rams, uh, Ramses and create a ruling class of the high priests of Amun at Thebes. Hathor ruled alongside Ramses the eleventh for some six years, 1080 to 1074 BC, and he died about five years before the king. For before that king, Hethras, uh are unknown. He had acquired the high title of viceroy of Kush, and ultimately the office of vizier, in addition to his priestly functions. His wife, uh, Najmit, Najmit, may have been a sister of Ramses the Eleventh, which helps to explain Hethra's prefer uh, uh, preference. His major building work is at the Temple of Kansu uh, on the south side in the temple complex of Amun at Thebes, where he built the forecourt and the pion, but otherwise the records of him are the pious restorations written on some of the coffins and dockets on the mummies from the royal cache, DB320. The mummy of Hethera's wife not met was found amongst those in the royal cache in 1881, but their joint funerary papyrus and magnificent illustrated copy of the Book of the Dead had come onto the antiquities market some years before the formal discovery. A linen docket on the mummy showed that the queen had been embalmed in or after year one of the tenth night king Sminis the first indicating that she outlived her husband by some five years she appears to have been hidden in another cache of mummies before being transferred to her last resting place Husband and wife were not buried together despite having a joint funerary papyrus. In fact, there is no trace of Hethra's burial apart from this papyrus, no uh, 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 Ushabit's uh, cantabic jars or fragments of funerary furniture. There is good reason to believe from rock scratch graffiti that Hethera's tomb may still await discovery in the Theban hills. Hethera's short lived successor as high priest of Amun and de facto pharaoh was Pennak, who may have been Hethera's son in law. There are records of Pennak fighting some rebels late in the reign of Ramses XI, but both he and Ramses appear to have died about the same time in 1070. Pinnock uh, was succeeded by his son Pinnidjib I, who is identified as such many times on the restoration dockets on the royal mummies. Uh, uh, Pinentium, although his name later appears in a royal cartouche, did not give himself uh, regnal years, nor had Eth uh, Herthra, 
but instead of the dockets use those of Smendes the first who ruled in the Delta until 1043 BC both coexisted in tranquility Pinagem's sphere of influence being centered on Thebes but also extending south as far as Aswan and north to El Hippa just south of the Fayum. In the Temple of Amun at Karnak, Pinaja appears on the outer face and entrance of the Pion beyond the first court and his name is on a number of scattered blocks. His major uh, usurpa uh, usurpation was to add his name to the colossal standing statue of Ramses II with a Demeter Queen Nefertiti at his knees in the first court of the Temple of Amun at Karnak. Relationships between the ruling families of the North and South were cemented in the age-old tradition of marriages. Pinejab married uh, Hidnut Tawe, a daughter of Ramses XI, by whom he had several sons and daughters. One son became Sadness, the first, the third king in the dynasty at Tennis. Willis, who Willis' two other sons, Massa Hurt, uh, Herta and Mikhet Pare, became success, successive high priests of Amun. Their sister, Malakare, was the divine god's wife and chief of the priestesses of Amun. Pinentiab's mummy and a large number of his bright blue facent Ashhabate figures from six Ashhabate boxes were found in the royal cache at Deir el Bare. Like the mummy of uh, Nudjitmit, uh, Pinentiab seems to have been moved to this cache from a previous one. He apparently had intentions of taking over the unfinished tomb of Ramses XI KV4, but never did so. Where he or any of the other priestly quasi-royal bodies found in the 1881 cache were originally buried whether in individual tombs or a large family tomb is unknown. After the two successive high priests of Amun, Masa Herta, 1054 to 1046 BC, and Mikhet Pare, 1045 to 992 BC, came later. Came the later's son. Uh, Smendes II, 992 to 990 BC, and then Pinejem II, Minkare Pare's son by his wife Isis, Isis, uh, Isis Min Haphet, daughter of Susnins the I, ruler in the Delta. Pinejem II's mummy and coffins were found intact in the royal cache, DB320, suggesting that this was his original place of burial. The king was accompanied by his large blue uh, Ushabtis together with one of his wives, uh, Neshans, and their daughter, Nes. Ten Bas Bashro Bashru. 
The fact that other members of the family were also found in the cache suggests that this was the original place of interment. It was the appearance on the antiquities market in the late 1870s of uh, Asheptus and funerary um, papery of these members of the 21st dynasty priestly royal family that altered Gaston uh, Mas uh, Masparo to the possibility of a new find. He thought that the Felians had discovered an intact tomb of the period. After intensive local questioning, the Abu el uh, Russell, Russell family were identified as the culprits and led the authorities to the concealed shafts of DV 320 in the next wadi south of Dair el Barre. Here they were amazed to discover not only the 21st dynasty bodies and equipment but also the mummies of the majority of the great pharaohs of the new kingdom. Uh, Sus uh, Susnesens the third is a shadowy, possibly even non-existent figure. If the evidence of a doubtfully red docket from Der El Barre tomb 320 is accepted, he would be a son of Pine Nechem the second with a reign of at least five years and some have suggested as much as 24 years okay so this is the go after Ramses XI who was the last pharaoh of the new kingdom uh, you had the, uh, the high priest Hether who basically was like a cold ruler with, the, with Ramses XI he died before Ramses XI, and this was the beginning of the power of the priesthood at Thebes. Uh, now, also it mentioned in, in tradition, especially in commit, in order to keep peaceful ties between the the dynasties of the uh, of upper and lower commit. They married into each other. So the priesthood did the same thing. They married daughters of Ramses the 11th to not only keep the peace, but to legitimize their rule. This was uh, standard practice at that time. Uh, so let's get into the 21st dynasty at Tantus. The move of power and control from upper Kemet to Lower Kemet, especially reflected in the founding of cities in the Eastern Delta by kings in the later 19th and 20th dynasties, made the division of Kemet complete. The autonomous high priest of Amun at Thebes paid a nodding uh, allegiance to the kings in the Delta they were nonetheless a separate entity. After Ramses XI died in 1070 BC, Smithus proclaimed, proclaimed himself king ruling from the Delta. With his ascension, the official 21st dynasty may be said to have begun. Menthos is able to present more detail with this dynasty, listing seven kings, each with their length of reign and allocating a total of 130 years for them. This corresponds well with the overall dates uh, postulated here of 1069 to 945 BC since Smithis is known to have lived at Memphis at least for a while no doubt the crowning ceremony was carried out there as of old 
the new king's origins are obscured, and he seems to have consolidated his position by marrying one of the many daughters of Ramses XI. The Delta capital was moved in Smithis' reign from uh, Paramses to Tentis, which was largely rebuilt using many monuments of Middle and New Kingdom date transferred from other sites. It was to become a great city of obelisk. Smithis also carried out extensive work at Karnak, which included the restoration of a section of the temple's great enclosure wall that protected it from the waters of the annual inundations. Smithis died in 1043 BC and the brief interlude before the ascension of Sumus the first in 1039 BC was filled by Amun Nadmusu, a son of Hethera, and uh, Najemet. Civil war still raged in the Theban area, and a number of the dissidents were exiled to the western oasis, then held by Libyan chiefs, a black granite still in the uh, Louvre records the banishment of these people and strangely their subsequent permit, permit to return under an oscular degree from Amun. It all seems to have been part of a plan between the north and south the secular and the religious factions. This reproachment was set in motion by the next king, Sunus I, in allowing the marriage of his daughter, Ismint Heb, to the high priest Mink Hekpare, uh, the royal burial chambers at Tentis. Okay, see, so during this time with Kemet, uh, as I mentioned before, the, you know, to, to, uh, uh, to have their dynasty recognized and married uh, daughters of the old dynasty. And also, too, there was civil war going, raging in the, the Theban area at this time as well. So this is a lot of chaotic things was going on with Kemet at this time. Alright, so further links between Tentis and Thebes manifested themselves in a temple dedicated to the Theban trio of Amun, Mut, and Kansut. At Tentis, it was within the precinct of this temple that Pierre Montet found in 1939 to 1940 the stone built burial chambers of the 21st dynasty kings. The rich tomb of Sunus was found intact, the only pharaonic grave ever discovered. Thus, the fabulous tomb of Tutankhamun, having been robbed twice in antiquity before being re resealed. A large carved red granite sarcophagus enclosed a black granite atopied coffin which in turn held a silver inner coffin. Over the face of the mummy lay a gold face mask, but the mummy had been substantially destroyed by the poor conditions. The large sarcophagus had originally been used 170 years earlier for the burial of um, Merneptah, the successor of Ramses II, in the Valley of the Kings, as his still 
readable cartouches on the lid showed. The black granite coffin had belonged to a high ranking 19th dynasty noble who could not be identified. The reuse of a Theban sarcophagus shows that there was friendly contact between north and south and also that the Valley of the Kings was in course of being officially looted or its contents recycled. Other members of the royal court buried at Tantus, including uh, Susnus' wife, Mut Najib, and his son and successor, uh, Amunet Mopet. Curiously, Amunet Mopet was buried in his mother's tomb and not in the one prepared for him. His burial at Tantus produced a fine group of funerary material, including a rather bland looking gold face mask but also not so rich as that of uh, Sanus. Between the reigns of Amun Mohat and Samun, there seems to have been a ruler called uh, Ankhapare, uh, uh, Satapinre, usually referred to as Old Sorkon the Elder, who may have reigned for up to six years, but the evidence is very scanty. Samun, who came to the throne in about 978 BC, reigned for almost 20 years. He is chiefly represented by his extensive building work in the Delta at Pi Ramses but principally at Tentus, where he enlarged the Temple of Amun. His name, however, is also very prevalent at Thebes, where it occurs several times with different uh, regional years of the bandages used in the rewrapping of a number of the later royal mummies, from the Del El Barre Cache of 1881, DB 320. The little light that is thrown on the 21st dynasty comes largely from the biblical record since the period coincides with the struggle of David and David in Israel to unite the tribes and destroy the Philistines. Exemplified initially in the story of David and Goliath, Samun obviously kept a watching brief on the Near Eastern situation, and Kemet was able to in interfere from time to time to protect her own interests and trade routes. Now, however, there was an evident change. In the Kemetan view of diplomatic marriages, where Herito there had been a stream of foreign princesses coming to the Kemetan court, the process was slightly reversed with Kemetan princesses marrying out. One princess married Hadid, the crown prince of the kingdom of Edom. When he took refuge in Kemet after succumbing to David's attacks, a son of this union, uh, Jinnab Beth, was brought up in the old traditions at the Kemetan court, and his father eventually uh, regained his throne after David's death no doubt still maintaining close family and trade ties with Kemet. And Kemetan campaign in which uh, Jezer was seized 
from the weakened Philistines, Philistines is recorded in the Old Testament. Solomon had succeeded his father David and Cometan alliance was sealed by Solomon's marriage to a Cometan princess. The end of the dynasty came with uh, Sustenance II, whose reign lasted 14 years, is little known. His successor, uh, Shishong uh, I, the founder of the 22nd dynasty, married uh, Mayat Kare, uh, Sustenance's daughter, thus forging another dynastic marriage tie. Okay, so during this period, uh, they also brought a, a biblical standpoint with King David and uh, uh, Solomon and uh, the princess, the daughter of the um, of the Pharaoh marrying the crown prince of Edom, and uh, this forge alliance, and then you had. Um, the last pharaoh of the 21st dynasty, uh, his daughter married the first pharaoh of the 22nd dynasty in order to submit the dynastic marriages and to also um, establish legitimacy for their dynasty. And, this, and also, they also mentioned there was an influx of foreign princesses coming into Kemet, marrying into the royal house. So this was a complete dilution of the, uh, I would say, the ethnicity of the Kemetan rulers. Uh, so we'll go into that further on Monday, discussing Dynasty 22nd. Another another dynasty that um, uh, reigned from Tantus, uh, Libyan, and also um, Bastis. So we'll discuss that. Uh, discuss the pharaohs of the twenty second dynasty, and we'll go from there. So once again, thank you for tuning in to today's show, uh, the Royal House of Ra. I am your host, Ramses Kufu El Ra. I look forward in communicating with all of you with the next show. Thank you for tuning in and continue your support of the Royal House of Ra here on YouTube. Have a blessed afternoon and God bless and take care.